In simple harmonic motion, we don't typically deal with friction force. And we might have a harmonic motion system such as this with a mass attached to a spring. And without any friction, there's no energy leaving the system, so it oscillates forever. And in this video, we're going to talk about damping, specifically damping that is a result of friction. So when we stretch a spring a distance away from the equilibrium point, and that distance, the displacement, or displacement will be represented as x equals displacement. And we stretch at a certain to x, then, and then we times that by our spring constant, so we have k times x, then we will have a force. And so the restoring force, when we stretch it this far, is going to want to push back. And that's our restoring force, and I'll represent it as F sub R, there's another restoring force, and then it'll be against our movement, so it'll be negative. So our restoring force is negative KX, so yeah. And basically, if we have a set mass, so let's imagine this system, and uh, we have a set mass, and we have a set period, doesn't change, then if we have a high restoring force, we will see, in general, the amplitude is higher. So A is higher, where A is the amplitude. But if we have a low restoring force overall, then our amplitude is lower. So from this, and it's very simple, the more magnitude our restoring force has, then like at this point, at the end point, then our amplitude is generally going to be higher. But if something happens, something happens and our force, our, our restoring force is reduced somehow, then we will go from a higher amplitude to a lower amplitude. And that, that's the fundamentals of, of damping. So we need some sort of equation where we can say we have our restoring force, and this will be our new one, we need an equation that says, okay, we need to take friction into account. How do we do this? So we take this, and what I mean by new is the um, resultant uh, restoring force. And so that equals the restoring force we had, you know, negative uh, kx. So this will be our old one. We're inputting it. And we subtract that by the, our, our friction force, so our friction. And this is, this is all the damping is. I mean, all we do is we take in, we put in our old restoring force, we subtract the friction, and this is all measured in newtons. Friction will be a result of newtons. And that will tell us what our actual, our new um, restoring force is. And so this is at any given point. So we, can, we can see what our restoring force would be. So how do we measure this? How do we calculate? Well, friction is proportional to the velocity. And this makes sense. So imagine we have a, a parked car. This is a terribly drawn car. OK, imagine that's a car. If it's at rest, how much friction is acting upon that vehicle at any given point? Well, that's a kind of a ridiculous question because it's parked. There's not any friction taking away energy in the system. But if this terribly drawn car is going at 10 meters a second, then friction, you know, it, it has drag as a result of friction, but only when it's moving. So it makes sense to assume that friction will be uh, proportional to our velocity. And there's no point in having friction based on potential energy. And so friction is measured with the damping constant B. And this is kilograms a second. Basically, or we can measure this as newton meters, or the impulse. So what this means is that uh, if B equaled 6, then per unit of velocity and friction, I'll just write this, friction equals B times V. And what this means is we take our damping constant B, in this case it equals 6, or times it by velocity. 
And so let's say our velocity is like this car. It's 10 meters a second. It equals velocity. Then what this says is that for every unit of velocity, we will take away 6 newtons. So what we do is we go 6 times 10, which equals 60. And 60 newtons is our friction force, based on a velocity of 10 meters a second. So if we had our uh, negative kx, our restoring force, and let's say that equaled um, 100. 100 newtons was our restoring force at the point where the velocity was 10 meters a second. Remember, this is just an instantaneous um, calculation of what the uh, restoring force will be. So we go restoring force new equals, we're taking 100 for our old one, minus b times velocity, and that, of course, equals 6 times 10, or 60 newtons. And we get 100 minus 60 newtons. And let's say our restoring force is, of course, negative. So well, in this case, it might be, might be positive, depending on where you are. So we'll just go 100 minus 60. And that means our new restoring force is only 40 newtons. Remember, the restoring force is always measured in newtons. So we end up with 40 newtons. And 60 newtons was our friction force. And so this only gives us an instantaneous calculation. Just like if we had money and we only compounded it once, we would only have an instantaneous um, you know, calculation. So what we have to do is use E to represent the sum of the friction forces over, say, a cycle. And we can do this and we can calculate the change in amplitude. Because as you can see, if we have friction acting upon it, we'll have a lower restoring force. We'll have a lower amplitude. So. If we, we use E for this, so if we want to calculate our new amplitude over, say, one cycle, one cycle being T, you know, T equals a period, then A equals, or A new, our new amplitude will equal our old amplitude times E, and this is just the formula to calculate it. We go E to the power of negative B times t divided by 2m, where m is the mass. And so what this means is that our resultant amplitude will be a result of our old amplitude times e to the power of negative b times the amount of cycles that we want to run it through divided by 2 times the mass. So if we knew what the damping constant was, and we knew what the period was, and we knew what the original amplitude was, we could calculate what our old amplitude would be, or sorry, what our new one would be. So let's say we had a, a damping constant of 6, and we knew the, the period, then we could say, well, our amplitude would be like 70% of what it used to be. And so this is all that really the damping is. So I'll do uh, more examples in the next video, but really, just as the, the concept of damping, we, we, we start with our, um, well, we're trying to calculate our new restoring force. Oops. So we start with our old restoring force and we subtract the amount of friction there is, and that gives us our new one. And to calculate, you know, the sort of the sum of this, then we use E, and then we'll calculate the amplitude. And we can also do this for energy, and I'll show you some examples in the next video.